My name is Tim Marcus. Uh, I started Milkman Sound in 2011. The Milkman Sound, it's the big open sound of like, you know, full bandwidth guitar with reverb and like, you know, tremolo pulsing is like the sound of the West. At the time, there wasn't a lot of boutique options for a steel guitar, and I started making amplifiers for pedal steel. A steel guitar player is like a very loud, clean amplifier with a lot of uh, headroom and a lot of bandwidth. And that was something that I was having a hard time finding was that like bandwidth, that like high fidelity sound. Basically, what I learned from building recording studios didn't really apply to amplifiers, and the first one didn't work, and I had this like weird, like kind of restless night's sleep where I was like trying to figure out what it was, and I had this kind of like thing in my dream that was like, try this. And so I woke up and tried that, and that was it. I had like figured it out, and that was my first amp that I made, which was the 85 watt. I built the amp and I left on a six week tour with my band and went to South by Southwest immediately. A bunch of people got to play out of it and try it and tell me what they liked and what they didn't like. And I got randomly out of the blue an email from Greg Lees, who's like one of the best steel guitar players in the world. And he was recording an album with Bill Frizzell and would I want to loan him my amp? <laughs> and I said, okay. And then after that, he was like, okay, I'll, I'd like to buy one. And I was like, okay, well, I only made this one. So I made him one, and then I had to go through all the same processes that I went through with myself. And then he took that amp on tour with Eric Clapton with him. That was kind of like when I started getting calls from other steel guitar players. But at that time, I was still just, I would consider myself a hobbyist, and I had another job, and it was just something I was doing in my bedroom. I moved into like a tiny little shop space here at Light Rail. Right around the time I moved in there is when I got the, like what I thought was a joke email from John Mayer, but <laughs> turned out to be a real email from John Mayer. And that's when things really like kind of caught fire. I was on this quest to find as many things that were made in the United States as possible. I mean, obviously some things are impossible to have made in the USA. The thing that really appealed to me about Jupiter is like, he's like, hey Tim, I'm like hand winding these things in Ohio. He sent me this like envelope of capacitors and I put them in and I'm like, yeah, these are very good. And I've been using them ever since. The mercury transformers that I use are made in California and they are very anal about the steel that they use, which also comes from the US, which is very expensive, which is why they're expensive, which makes the amps expensive, but it's so worth it because that material is just so consistent from transformer to transformer. And so I just kind of was really like focusing on things that were kind of bomb proof for touring people and also made in the US so that they were easier to get in like smaller quantities and also just very high quality. Sergio from Mercury, big custom one he did for me was for the pint, the 10 watt class A running two 6v6s in parallel. He sent me like a pile of different ones with just tiny changes between the two and I picked my favorite one and that's what I've been using ever since. It was a Christmas that I spent with my wife's family in Kansas City. And I was just kind of like, you know, just on the internet, like looking at stuff. And I was like, you know, like, I think I could take my preamp and like dump it into this Class D power amp. There was a company somewhere in the Midwest that was making these like Class D things. And I had this giant like transformer. And I was like, no, I was like, it can't be like heavier than what I already have. I just kept searching and searching. And then I eventually found these Class D modules that really, really sounded good. The way they feel when you play guitar through them is very similar to like a Class A amp even though it was like a solid state power amp. And some of that comes from the tube part of the preamp. But basically like I kept experimenting and refining the circuit down until I got the steel guitar half and half. So that kind of made me really interested in it once I got the response from the steel guitar version. Then I came out with a bass version of it, which is kind of a similar preamp with the 700 watt version. So I have this little 12 pound version and I have some friends that were doing like a lot of festival touring and they would just like stick the little half and half on top of the giant tube amp and they were like, yeah, this is way better for traveling. 
And eventually I was like, okay, well, what if I took that 300 watt circuit and did like a 50 watt version for guitar? And that's where I ended up with the amp pedal. Cause it was like, how can I get this thing to be as small as possible and have it sound essentially the same? A Swiss army knife for guitar players and steel guitar players. You can really make it sound like whatever you want. <laughs> I think just approaching it from a musician's mind and from a artistic mind, like that, that seems to work for me. <laughs> you know, if that I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. 